Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to the live Shabbat class. This is your host, Jeremiah Israel, and welcome to another Sabbath day. Before we get started, those who are new and are return visitors, if you have not done so already, please hit the like and the subscribe button. Doesn't cost a thing. It helps to get this message across the YouTube uh, YouTube network. And uh, it also not notifies you whenever I upload a new lesson. This is a teaching ministry. I teach the gospel of the Most High God in Christ according to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. And Jeremiah 29 and 5. Build ye houses and live in them. Plant ye gardens and eat the fruit of them. I'm not part of a camp, nor am I teaching their their doctrine or their ways. You know, they do they do what they do, and I do what I do. I'm gonna teach you the, the law, statutes, and commandments, and change your mindset so that you can understand that the Most High God wants you to separate from everything that is unrighteous. Everything that is not good to to build your communities and live in them by yourself, not not next to your your enemy, like Black Wall Street, not next to your enemy, so that they see you advancing and, and, and get angry and, and for any reason at all they come and burn your house down. No, you go out as the Most High God told uh, Moses. And Aaron to go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go three days and a half journey into the wilderness so they may worship me. You don't go next to next door to the white man and want to build your, your whole community over there and, and, and your community look better than theirs. That's going to cause some, they're going to cause some strife and some grief and next thing you know, death, murder, kill. Your enemy hates you. Get from under them. Come from among them. Be ye separate. So I just want to let you guys know the most High God is not going to receive you until you start doing the things he told you to do. And if you can't do those things, then you know what? You're just going to get picked and pulled out of this world by your enemy. And the most High God sent them to you. You can pray all you want to, but he, he ain't, he's on the enemy side. He tell you that in his word. Like I said, the fact is, because you don't know his word, you don't understand what's going on. You be asking dumb questions. Why why was slavery allowed to, to, to people? Because the most high God told you, if you didn't do what he told you to do, that was going to happen. Anyway. If you guys want to support my network, don't ca cash out me. Don't send me any money, but you can go to you go to Amazon.com. You know, two, you know, two ways you will support. You know, you can subscribe to my network and like my pay, like my uh, like my videos. You can go, and you also can go to Amazon.com and and purchase. One of my books, you know, I, I hear a lot of time where I hear so-called Hebrews or Israelites or black folk talking about, oh, black people don't write. Okay, I got 17 books so far, and I'm still writing. Now, the fact is, you know, other black folks, so-called black people don't like to support black folks. And like I said, I'm, these books are not very expensive. This book here, paperback, probably about... It's they're less than twenty bucks. This paperback. You can get an ebook format, probably about four dollars. Biblical events. If you want to get this book in the library, you have a library card. You could, you could go to the library website, and there's a section that you know books that you recommend or whatever. You can up. Uh, Put this information in there. Biblical events. 
the name of the author. You need the title of the book, the name of the author, and this ISBN number right here. And you can go to uh, to get that information. All thing you have to do is go to Amazon.com, put my name in right here, Jeremiah Israel. All the books that I've written in, under that name will pop up. You click on the link to this book, and when you go to that page, you'll be able to get all, collect all this information, biblical events, Jeremiah Israel, and the ISBN number. Take that information, put, put it on the library website, and nine times out of ten, they'll, they'll purchase the book and contact you when the book is available. I also was writing in my given name, name given to me at birth, Stephen Ederson. I'm a senior because my son, I have a junior. So, Stephen Ederson Sr., Prophets of Israel. Uh, this is, this is, uh, give you doc documenting the works of most of the, pro most of the prophets. Uh, most of the prophets give you some information regarding the prophets and timelines. Give you in their timeline when, when they were about and the things that uh, the Most High God told them to go to the people for. Now, you can use this if this book here to determine whether the stuff that people tell you are sin or not sin. See if it was something that the Most High God sent the prophets to his people for. You will find that. It would be hard to, to, to find out that it wasn't. You know, because, you know, right now, people, these so-called religious leaders are creating their own commandments, not according to the Most High God. A lot of the things that they're, they're telling you that is sinful is not found in the Bible. The things that they don't preach on that are sinful like celebrating on Sunday when the Most High God told you to remember him on on the, uh, the Sabbath, which is seventh day, Saturday, at, at sunset is the, the change of the day according to the Most High God. So Friday at sunset <coughs> begins a new day. That's actually the beginning of, uh, of the next day. So, they don't preach on that. They, that's, they don't consider that a sin. They don't consider you eating shellfish and hogs and all kinds of pork and all that, that the things that the Most High God told you not to eat. They don't consider that a sin. You just got to be aware of who you, who you follow for who you follow because a lot of the times they're giving you commandments after their own heart not after the, after the commandments of the Most High God alright let us begin with our lesson Shalom Israel this includes you so called blacks Hispanics and Native Americans those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas Africa, India, Europe, Asia and the islands those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is how can you recognize a believer in Christ? Part two. My goal is to provide as many attributes as possible to recognize and follow the truth. Because the fact is, even when you say you're in the truth, a lot of times you're falling, you're falling, not after the truth, not after the Most High God. Second Timothy, three and six, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, led away with all types of lusts. But, you know, like I said, just understand what they're saying here. All these sorts of people creep into houses and lead captive 
silly women who don't understand nothing. They got all kinds of sins on them. Led away with all kinds of diverse, different types of lust. That's why these women today out here, they cannot, they cannot be loyal to one man. But they, because they got all types of lust on them. They can't be true to one man. A, a, a man can do all he can do for a, for these type of women, and they not going to be true or loyal to him. They're going to put babies on them that they know are not his baby. The child going to look just like the, the, the other men that they're having sex with, but they're going to have this man taking care of somebody else's kid, and they know it. Now, we're not talking about every women, all women. Don't, so don't, don't, don't you women get butthurt about things that y'all know other women are doing. And, and, and the fact is, it's true, but it's not true about you. I'm not talking about you, you know, righteous women who, who, are, who are righteous to, to their men. Loyal to their men. These type of leaders always seem to influence gullible and silly women to establish their leadership because most Christian churches, the majority of the attendance, attendees are women who are filled with all types of sins and they will, they will fight on their leader's behalf justifying their leader's actions in spite of the law. Second Timothy 3 and 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You got, you got these people know, learning all kinds of stuff. You know, they learning all types of things, but the fact, the, the, the fact of the Bible, they, they don't know, understand nothing. They learn all kinds of stuff that has nothing to do with salvation. Nothing to do with salvation. I'm not saying whether it's, whether it's true or not. I, it don't care. I don't care whether this is true or not. But the fact is, if you're interested in salvation, you go to the Bible and get understanding of what God promises and get what God said that would happen. And see if it didn't happen. And if it's, like I'm saying, there are things that have already has happened. In regards to what the, all this junk that you're filling your mind with. And nothing, nothing has, it has nothing to do with your salvation. Nothing. Many Israelite camps think that these scriptures are not referring to them. However, they are always opening new books to reveal what happened to the Israelites. And that is a good thing. But the question is, does that bring them closer to the laws and commandments? 2 Timothy 3 and 9. But they shall process, they shall proceed no further. For they their folly shall be manifest unto all men as it as theirs also was. Let me read that again. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. These type of Israelite leaders have gone as far as they are going to go, and the Most High shall reveal their foolishness for all men to see. There are a few scandals in the media today that validate this precept. There is this T.D. Jake scandal that is presently taking place. He's going as far as he's going. He's not coming back from that. Was that guy revealed his folly, his foolishness? And that's far as he's going. You know, he had a big church filled with people. Now, you know, they got videos on, on, on they got they got uh videos now showing the church is empty on Sunday. Now I'm not saying whatever it is that he's doing, I'm I'm not I'm not saying he's guilty of uh, not guilty because I don't know. But if that's his folly, if that's his foolishness, it's going to be revealed. 
And the Most High God is not going to allow him to go any further than he's gone. And so, is, so, so with all of you Hebrew leaders, you, you, you Israelite camp leaders, the same thing. If your if your father if your foolishness is found out, it's because the Most High God revealed it. And your foolishness is going to lead you. You're not going no further than you've already gone. Regardless of whether you're in the leadership position or not. Whether you remain there or not. You're going no further. Thus said the Most High God. Second Timothy 3 and 12. Yea. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. These so-called Israelite leaders, which are now being revealed, were not being persecuted. The Most High God simply got tired of them playing with his word. Ezekiel 22 and 25. There's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Mm. The Most High is talking about those who are calling themselves prophets that are currently among the Israelites. See, when you, when you look at these, uh, these precepts, who's calling themselves the prophets? These, these Christian churches are not calling themselves prophets. Let's read that again. Ezekiel 22 and 23. There's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. In the midst of who? In the midst of his people. Conspiracy of the prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring, roaring lion ravening the prey. They're on the corners loud as whatever. With, with their speakers and everything. Rowing lions. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. Yeah, they out there taking, you know, they not to them pay tithes, but you know what? Arms and all that other stuff for, for us to travel and all this. What you, what, you know, the thing about it is the shepherd feed the sheep. Not the sheep feed the shepherd. Yeah, it's, it's a two-way thing because the the, the, the uh, shepherd do feed you know feed the sheep when they you know when they kill one of the, uh, the sheep and they feed the uh, feed the family. But you don't the, the shepherd the sheep don't constantly feed the shepherd, and he don't he don't provide uh, uh, resources for them. If, if you know in in the sheep and shepherd uh, uh, analogy. There are, you know, you can't continue to feed off the sheep without providing anything, no, so, no type of resources, no food, no, 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 no uh, medicine or whatever that the sheep need. You're just going to have a bunch of bones to eat. That's why I asked you the question. Do the sheep feed the shepherd or the shepherd feed the sheep? The Most High God is talking about those who are calling themselves prophets that are currently among the Israelites. The sheep. The lost sheep. The Most High is identifying them as roaring lions. What purpose are they standing on Street corners roaring like lions at their people who are passing by. Are they collecting resources to build communities, create farms to gather their people under the law? What have they done to turn away the indignation from his people? The Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob deals with the nation of Israel, not an individual. That is religion where, where you are looking for individual blessings. The Most High God 
sent the entire nation of Israel into captivity. Not the individual. So whenever you're looking at this in the right way, if you're looking at it individually, oh, the Most High God going to bless me and, and my family. Yeah, he, he, he will bless you and your family. But the thing about it is, it's always about your people. It bless you and your family to bless others. To bless other people. To, to do good to other people. To provide resources. You know, yeah, you you should live you should live godly you should live, live good but in in that in that living good you should also say you know what my brother is suffering you know those who are righteous and those who are doing doing the laws of the and commandments of the most high god everybody should be joining together and trying to get them a community let's 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 build a community out here already on bought the land we got we got the land already Let's put some houses on it. Let's put this on it. Let's get together and put this on it. We, we, we uh, create a corporation first. Everybody got got a stock in this corporation, so that if you were to sell your invest your your part of the uh, of the, the stock in that corporation, you still got value. You you can still cash out and say, you know what, I don't want to be part of this community no more. I'm going to sell my stock and I'm gone. Okay, we'll sell your stock to such and such. They've been trying to get in for the longest. We have, we have st well, we have an uh, extra amount of stock. And you know what, we buy your stock, stock back. You can, you can go. We're not, we're not going to keep you here. The Most High God don't want you here if you don't want to be here. This is how the Most High God feel about you right now. He got a lot of children. And if you don't want to be his, his son and daughter, he don't need you there. You know, he's not going to... The Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob ain't running after you. You know, oh, he's going to run after to kill you, but the fact is, he ain't going to run after you to, to, to bless you and say, come on home, son, come home, come on. No, he ain't going to do that. You're going to give you a few chances, a couple of chances. Hope you repent. And the X chance that he, that he gave you and you didn't take it, that might be your last chance. Ezekiel 22 and 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none I was looking for a man to stand in the gap between wickedness and righteousness to stand in the gap stand in the hedge because there was a that there, there was a uh, what's what's the word when 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 you got a gap in the fence that done broke down there was, that was a gap that, that that had broke down. What's a good word for that? When the, when a breach, that was a breach in the hedge where there was a gap. He was looking for somebody to stand in the gap a right a, a, a righteous man to stand in the gap. He said that most like God said there was none. Right now, that is the case today. All y'all who claiming to be righteous, he looking for a man to stand in the gap, in the, in the gap of the hedge, where it's been breached between him and you. It's been a breach. The gap is between the Most High God and, the, and you and the Israelites. He want, he's looking for a man to stand in the gap between the Most High God and the Israelites, and there he did not find one. He still haven't found one because the fact is, you guys are not producing any good fruit. There's no fruit that y'all producing that's saying, you know, we have done this in all the name of the Most High God. We have built this. There's no fruit. Because if there was, there would be people eating off of that fruit.
Right now, the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is looking for a man to fully stand on his behalf. Psalms 94 and 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Uh, who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Which one of you is going to stand up? We're not talking about y'all talking about you. We the prophet of the most high and ain't doing none of his work. None of the work that is required for his people. Who going to stand up? Who going to be, who going to put themselves in the gap between the most high God and the people and start trying to fill that gap with righteousness and do all the things that the most high God told you to do? Who? Rising up means that you will you take hold of the Most High God's covenant to hearken, to observe, and to do all his commandments and statutes. If he commands the Israelites to build a community, then do not ignore his commandment. Do it. There are many Israelites claiming to be rising up, but they are rising up doing their own, after their own heart, and not after the Most High. Yeah, they rising up, but the Most High God ain't, didn't tell them to do any of the stuff that they are doing. Ezekiel 22 and 31. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recomp recompensed upon their heads, said the Lord God. Our own way. Our own way must have been wicked. He paid back our own way upon our head. So, what the Most High God is telling you right now in his precepts that all of this duggery and stuff that we're doing right now, we were doing that then. We were still in we were stealing other people's children, putting them into slavery, robbing, raping, killing. So, most I got to just turn that up on our own head. The Most High God will pour out his indignation upon these Israelite leaders who are abusing the word of the Most High God for their self-gratification, who are claiming to be shepherds but are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7 and 15, be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. To beware of something means you are supposed to be watching out for something. In this instance, false prophets. 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Do not rush to join any group because you believe someone calling himself a prophet. Devils always come with half-truths and lies because the fact is many of these devils know more they know more of the Bible than you do because they have had the Bible in their in their hands since 70 AD or since the Septuagint since the Greek had the Bible since the, the, the Bible was translated into the Greek language these devils have had the Bible for that long since three this round of, uh, I'm gonna say around two two eighty six BCE. They have had the Bible continuously in their language since then, and then when the Greek, the Latin got got the Bible translated into their their language, and we discontinued the Most High God discontinued us from from uh, all of that in the in the. Uh, Especially from 1600 on. 
So there were generations where we couldn't even read. We couldn't read Hebrew, English, or anything. We couldn't speak English, Hebrew, or anything. We were born on this land. But y'all talking about the Hebrew languages out know the most high God said he would give us a pure language. This, that, that language is no longer ours. He took it from us. Jeremiah 17 4 and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave given thee and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies when we, we serve our enemies we discontinue from our heritage we don't the Hebrew is not our language anymore it was discontinued that was your heritage at first But y'all, y'all trying to speak Hebrew and stuff because that's our language. No, it's not. You don't have a language. Matthew 7, 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Do you gather grapes of thorns and figs of thistles? When you're giving people fruit, are you giving them thorns and thistles? That's not fruit. You will know the prophets. And, 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 and let, me, let me clarify that. When you're giving people thorns and thistles, Meaning that you're just taking all their damn money where they are struggling and suffering to, to support you and your missions and all of this stuff so for us to travel and all that. People working they working their ass off so that they can pay an extra bill because you're arms and arms and this arms. And, man, I gotta pay my damn bills. Won't you won't you support your own travel? Apostle Paul and and, 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 the, and the disciples never asked anybody for nothing. All the money that they were getting, getting, they were giving to the people in Jerusalem. All, all the poor people. The fatherless and the widows. Y'all not talking about that ministry. Y'all want people to support y'all travels and stuff. That's not how the that's not how the word goes. You haven't built. You, you're giving people thorns and thistles because you you you're making them struggle, making it hard for them. You know, y'all bypass these words and these things like you don't know pretty much of anything because you, you know you're just looking at it like okay, we they talking about the Christian church. No, they talking about you Hebrew camp, calling yourself Hebrew because because the, the Bible was not. It's never been toward Christianity per se, because there was no such thing as Christianity back then. All that is, is, is you know, that's idolatry. You will know the prophets by their fruits. Once you try them by the truth that you that you have learned, this can only be determined. After you repent and return to the laws and commandments and under grace, learn how to be godly, sober, and denying worldly lusts in this present world, according to Titus 2, 11 and 12. How can you determine righteousness while you are living in darkness? What I'm saying is, though everything may seem simple, some things require work. You, you can't, you know, why, when you are in darkness, in sin, everything a devil that says something to you in your face, he going to come with half truths. It's not going to be all a lie. It's going to be half truth because the fact is, when they tell you, when the devils tell you that the laws are done away with, they ain't telling you which law. You know you can't kill and steal and all that stuff. Those laws are not done away with. So the civil laws are not done away with. 
The moral laws are not done away with. The dietary laws are not done away with. But the, sacri the sacrificial laws are. The ceremonial laws are not done away with either. You got to worship the Most High God when He tell you to worship. Not on Saturday. Not on, I mean, not on Sunday. But on the Sabbath, which means seventh. On the seventh day. Think the devil tells you stuff like the laws are done away with, and y'all just take it and run with it. all the laws. He didn't say all the laws, he said the laws are done away with. So the fool, the, the, the simpleton, the simple minded individual, when they say the laws are done away with, they go, oh, all the laws are done away with. Knowing damn well if you go out there and murder somebody right now, that law ain't done away with. And you can't go to the judge. Judge, all the laws are done away with. See if that see if that you know proves your case and they let you go. You know. Like I'm saying, you know, a lot of times, you know, this precept of Second, of second Timothy's uh, saying, you know, go, they go in the houses of silly women, you know, silly women and men who, who got mindsets like that. I, I don't even talk to people like that. You know what? When they they come on my page and, and start with that Christianity type bull crap, I just remove their, their, their message off my page because, you know what? I have no time to argue with them, you know. Once I give, once I try to correct them, and they they, they want to come with that Christian doctor, I just delete everything off. I'm like, you know what? I have I have I have no time for somebody just justifying wickedness wickedness on my page. I remove their message and everything. Just remove it, because you're not going to justify wickedness on my page, and I'm gonna let it stand. Matthew 7 and 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. What fruit have these prophets brought forth? Are we still in captivity? Have they built a community? Bought land for farming? Gathered their people in the communities they're commanded to build? Where is the fruit? Their efforts are proven to be nothing but religion. Because through the scriptures, Yah showed the Israelites how to gather while we are in captivity. Jeremiah 29 and 5. They don't break they don't bring that. I have not seen one bring that scripture up. Not once. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. We ain't talking about Christianity here. We talking about people among. We talking about the, the, the people of, of God. Israelites. Deception has gotten worse. Israelites are willing to believe liars. Who stand on a pulpit and never open the Bible and talk about the Most High God in Christ. Romans 3 and 3. For what if, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? This is the approach that the deceivers take. They do not believe in Yah. But they know that the Holy Bible has power. Which they use the Bible. Of, they use the power of the Bible to for deception. These pulpit gangsters will be judged for their sins. Many pulpit gangsters do not believe that they are committing a transgression. They are collecting millions of dollars and they are helping nobody but themselves or they are not doing the works according to the will of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yah, comm Yah commands them to build communities and farms to grow their own foods, but they collect money to travel to talk about things. First Samuel 2 and 3. Talk no more. So exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy. Come out of your mouth. For the Lord. 
is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. He weighs your actions. Not like all the stuff you come out to do and, and all the conversations you stand on, on corners and pulpits. Where are your actions? That building the school and all this stuff, most of God ain't interested in that. He didn't tell you to do that. He told you to build a community. Then you can put a schoolhouse inside of your community. The most High God is not interested in your conversation. Your actions are weighed. He will judge you by your actions. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in the sins and mightest overcome when thou art judged. How do you let the Most High God be true in your life? When you read his word and do not do as he commands, are you letting God be true? Or are you using God so that you can be true and making the Most High God a liar? Is that what you're doing? Romans 3 and 5. But if our unrighteousness commend the, commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteousness who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Religious gangsters are presenting their unrighteousness as suitable or praiseworthy, replacing the righteousness of the Most High God, the audacity of them. Do you think Yah is unrighteous when he takes vengeance on those who follow after unrighteousness? Romans 3 and 6, God forbid. For then, how should God judge the world? This is the foolishness of, of, of a lot of so-called Christians because all the laws are done away with, then how is God going to judge the world? How will you be judged? Because there is going to be a thing called judgment day. And if y'all sitting up there think, believing after these so-called Christian pastors that you can do what you want to do and God don't care, oh boy, it's going to be a sad story for you. This is a oh. where are we gonna con we gonna stop here and we'll continue on part three. This will be part three. We'll continue on here. Uh, how can how can you recognize a reliever in Christ? Part three. Because this this is a you know the fact is this is a very uh, a very dynamic subject subject because you know because a lot of people come at you in so many ways and, and you know because you you are living in sin or in darkness where you don't really know God and you don't know his word and people coming at you as uh, the people holding the light or holding the truth and then you know once you get into this truth then you start saying these people are number liars they're not doing what God tell them to do and you start picking up things that the most high God told them to do and they're not doing it you start seeing in their actions that they are not acting the way that the Most High God told them to act. They want to use the Bible to take take everybody to the Bible and stuff like that. They don't want, you know, they don't want to be ripped off, but they're going to rip you off, though. They're always going to use the Bible to justify all of their mean ways, and they're going to team up on you and double team you so that you, you're not going to ever win, even though when you're right, you're not going to win. Because they're going to bring their people that's on their side to support their, their actions. And you be by yourself, you're not winning. I don't care what environment you're in. Because they're going to be the respectable people. 
and you're not, we don't know him, you know, we, you know, you, they're going to dog you out. They can steal money from you and, you know, you know, hey man, you know, loan, why don't you loan us this $5,000 and we'll pay you back. And they can loan, you know, you can loan five grand and, and you'll never get that money back. And they're going to bring all their people saying oh, whatever they want to say. You might well just don't, you know, all right, man, I'm going to leave it alone. And when you when you leave leave that congregation, they're gonna call you all kinds of demons. That's how these organizations work. If you want to get get your get your head filled up in that, you either you're gonna be part of the problem or you you just gonna leave them alone. Understand who, what you're dealing with. Anyway, I. It's just, that's just. We we just got to come according to the Most High God and come correct. You you can't trust all of these devils because you know most of them are devils. In in, in like I'm saying, these are the devils. These are the wolves that are in sheep clothing right now today. Now you, you know, like I'm saying, the fact is you don't have to believe a word I say. You don't have to believe a word I say. But there are many of you right now understanding fully what I'm talking about. And, and like I'm saying, I'm just I'm just telling you straightforward, like like it is. These are the ways of our people. That we've been this way. That's that's why the most I got have a problem with us. But anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Doesn't cost a thing. If you want to uh, support my network, you can purchase one of my books on Amazon.com. Biblical Events, it's my last book. Uh, this name, Jeremiah Israel, put it in the search line. I have a number of books that's, that I've written in this name, and a lot of them are doing pretty good. Prophet of Israel, this is uh, books I was writing in my given name at first, Stephen Edison Sr. And if you want to get familiar with the prophets and what, the, what they uh, were sent to the Israelites for, it be a great book for you to have in, in your... Uh, you know, I'm just giving you the books from, you know, the books of the Bible is showing you what they came for in the, in the timeline these people came. Because a lot of y'all have a problem with the timeline. Anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. And with that, family and friends, I like to say, Shalom. Shalom.